this lesson I'm going to outline five different rules of composition. Now it's important to state from the very start that learning these rules should not be the only way that you think about images. That is, once you've learned the rules, try and break them occasionally, otherwise all your pictures are going to start to look the same. The first of the rules is called the rule of thirds. And for the rule of thirds, we normally divide an image into two vertical and two horizontal lines that we draw through the third of the images. Now as they crisscross, we have golden points, and those are the points we like to see the action happen in the image. This divides the frame up nicely and avoids you placing subjects right in the centre of the image. Try and place your subjects on the golden points where those third lines crisscross. Now in the examples we've got from Thomas Combana, we start with two people walking across the beach. Now if you have people walking in an image, you want to put them on the third line, giving them two thirds of the image to walk into. That is not half of the image or just a third, but the majority of the image so we can see where they're going. If you're taking pictures of people in a vertical image, try and make sure their eyes go through the top third line. That way it will provide good balance to the photograph. The second rule is to use lines, and lines are a great way to draw the viewer's eye into an image. Look for railway tracks, paths, roads and coastlines to use. Diagonal lines add a good depth to the image as well, and we can do that when we're taking pictures of buildings. So the, for the first example, we see Thomas has taken a picture of a jetty, and there he's run the jetty into the bottom left and the bottom right of the picture. This gives us good depth to the image as our eye is drawn into the photograph. We also see good perspective as well in this image. The next picture on a railway line, you see he's done a very similar thing, putting the, the railway tracks going into the bottom left and the bottom right of the camera. The next rule is called a frame within a frame, and we use frames in the landscape to draw attention to our subjects. Look for windows, doors, door frames and arches to frame your subjects. Also try and find sometimes natural objects like trees where you can shoot through and create a natural frame as a result of that. In Thomas's examples, and we have two here, the first is of two people who work in a restaurant looking through the grate in their window. Now he's framed the two faces within the frames. Now here we have multiple frames to look at, but it nicely breaks up the image and gives us a very interesting composition. The second is more simplistic, where he's used just a broken window frame to shoot two people walking past on a road. See how he places those people right in the middle, and he's also used the diagonal lines as well as a way of creating a bit more depth to the photograph. The next rule is really a simple one for editorial photographers, and that is try and think of a cover shot whenever you're taking pictures of people. Now you might not necessarily get the cover, but if you do it's always good to have a photograph that's easy to use. When you frame for a cover it's a very unnatural position because you often put the head right in the middle, just like I told you not to do before, because the picture is going to be balanced later by putting the strap lines across the top and other information down the left and the right. Designers always like images with plenty of dead space where they can put their titles and their strap lines. The final composition rule is about backgrounds. and It's important when you're taking pictures particularly of people that you try and keep the background as simple as plain as possible. I often tell people who are taking portraits, look behind the picture before you look actually at the subject you're taking a picture of. That is because with our eyes we're seeing three dimensions. But when you get the photograph back it's in two dimensions and anything that's behind your subject is going to be plastered right on the back of the head. Now this is particularly important when you're using the point and shoot cameras because it's difficult to throw the background out of focus. Therefore anything behind your subject is likely to be very clear in your image when you finally get it back. So always go for simple on plain backgrounds and make sure there's no lines or anything too busy that cuts through the person's head. Okay that's it for this lesson, now we're going to talk about light.